Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we will be talking about graphic organizers. Hi, my name is Guy Trainen. And my name is Ashley Roki. And this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge, and today we're talking about graphic organizers. All right. So the first graphic organizer app I have is called Kidspiration. Um, and this is the free version. So obviously, if you buy the full version, you'll have more. Um, to, it'll have more to offer for you. Um, so you can do various things on this app, and that's why I like it. You can create um, many different kinds of graphic organizers. And it also has um, stickers. So you can add images, which is very helpful for younger students, especially. So you can uh, really do this as a visual map and not so much dependent on text, especially again, yes. if you're working with young, with young younger kids. students. Another thing I like about this is obviously like you can have the kids create because a mm -hmm. lot of the times in the classroom, the teachers give you the graphic organizer. And I think kids benefit from creating their own. OK. And so can you show us something you've created? Yes. In your documents, I have this organizer created. And it was on a reading mm -hmm. section. And it was how um, we care for animals or pets. And so you just generate ideas of how you do this. And you just branch them off. So how can you add more bubbles if you want to? You click on the main bubble in the middle. And there's a little <laughs> blue arrow. And it'll bring out a bubble. And you can drag it. Mm -hmm. And then you double click to add text in. OK, and how do you use the stickers? So how do you add stickers? And what do you exactly do with them? OK, um, to add stickers, you go up here. And there's various categories. So we'll find the pets one. And it'll take you right to the pets. Um, and you just drag it on. It doesn't allow you to put it in, in the, the bubble. But you can branch off of this. Oh, so you can use this nice. as a bubble. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So Excellent. you can branch ideas off of that. OK. And um, if you want to share it with a teacher or with a fellow student, what do you do? Um, this little share button up here allows you to email, print, or iCloud photo sharing. There's not very many options for sharing, but you could, s via email, mm -hmm. is a nice way to do that. So you can make it, though, a photo. So you can share it mm -hmm. at that point as uh, like anything else that you have on your photos. Yes. And another great feature is being able to record. Oh, so you can record your you voice You can record. It? OK, so can you show us? OK. So I'll hit the record. And this graphic organizer is about how we care for animals and pets. And this graphic organizer is about how we care for animals and pets. So it'd be very useful for students to record um, their voice, mm -hmm. and they can always go back in and add the bubbles okay. after they generate their ideas. And I see that you can import pictures into this? Yes, you can. And so lots of options of ways for students to use this creatively and not be tied just to the software itself with the bubbles, but actually pictures, their own pictures, text, and uh, adding photos as well yeah. to, to the mix. And they have. Um, already pre-made ones on here. See, there's different categories mm -hmm. like reading, writing, social studies, science, and math. And they're actually activities. So that's nice, too. Like several things you can create on here. So uh, this can be as a support for a teacher if you want to use something specific for a, a lesson you're planning. It uh, can also be scaffolding students' understanding of how you use Graphic Organizer. So uh, you use, in the beginning, a uh, a graphic organizer that's partially filled and it's all there so students just have to fill in and then slowly you can pull down uh, the scaffolds uh, and make sure that they can actually start doing it on their own deciding how many bubbles and what's in them and what levels and what categories because that's where we want them to be to be able to generate this on their own but we know that when they walk in they don't necessarily know how to right mm -hmm. So the second graphic uh, organizer we want to talk about is actually in an app called Stick Around Now. And in Stick Around, uh, you have to know that this is a paid app. This is a $2.99 app. I think it's worth it, but you have to consider whether you want to invest that. And 
make sure that you think about how many devices do you want it on, etc. But it's a great, great app. And what this app does is it really allows you to do to create an organizer or students to create an organizer but then create an activity attached to it which means you're taking it to a different level and I'll give you an example and these are the examples that come with stick around so let's look at the water cycle we can uh, open the water cycle and then what you can see is that you can take the word so for example looking at evaporation and try to put it where it needs to go and then condensation I think that's here and plants, I would guess, is here. And then ground flow and percolation. Where would percolation it's be? That one. Percolation's. Uh <laughs> Where would uh, this one would be percolation? Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Eventually, I get it. <laughs> and precipitation is here. So you can see that this actually has tasks, and it actually takes even the time it takes you to complete the task. So students can use those stickers on the side to actually do an activity. Of course, they can also create their own, which is the next level. OK, so now it's your turn. How about you try the planets? OK. Mine doesn't show up with stickers, though. This oh. is the background. Try oh. this. So there are multiple ways to look at this. In this case, we're looking at the, just the template that is the background. We can look at it with the stickers. There's an answer key, and then you can press on play. So press on play. Let's see what happens. And now oh. the planets are on the side, and now you've got to find out where they go. And that's considerably harder than the one I was doing. Yes, I don't know so. my planets. Well, <laughs> we're third planet from the sun, so that's a safe bet. But you get a sense of how you do this and how much this can become from a very, or from a fairly simple uh, exercise to a very complex one based on what you want uh, to do. And what I love about this one is it does have the question mark so you know exactly where to put it. Uh, because in Stick Around, it is important where you exactly place everything. So this tells you where it needs to go. And now go back and try to make a new one. And we can see what templates we have uh, to do this. So go to my project and discard changes. And now let's uh, press the plus. That's how we get a new thing on almost everything. And you can see that there are lots of templates that you can use here. There's a simple Venn diagram. There's a compare and contrast or pro and con, whatever you want on a kind of a T-chart or lots of details. Uh, great ways to think about how do we organize information and then just choose one. I don't know which one. Venn diagram. Always safe. Always so safe. we label both sides. Um, let's say uh, pets and wild animals. You know, animals tame and wild. And playing around is really good when you're doing that with this kind of uh, an app and you're trying it for the first time. Uh, persistence is really important with apps until you figure them out. And some apps are worth it, other apps not so much. My experience with Stick Around, it's worth investing some time and effort into realizing what it can and can't do, because then uh, what you can do is really, really interesting. And again, we want to start with teachers creating for students and using it for practice, but eventually we want to get to the point where students are creating for each other and to show that they understand really well. So that's another way to use Stick Around in more productive ways. Even if you have kids with one-to-one -one environment where they take the devices home, I would suggest, hey, do this as a homework assignment. It's a kind of assignment that they would like, they would engage with at home and be able to do some fantastic things with. Okay, let's move to our last app today. Our last app that we have for graphic organizing is iBrainstorm. And this app is pretty awesome because you can collaborate. Mm -hmm. So to add So uh, each device identified devices around it that are on Bluetooth and then uh, makes them show up. You can have up to three, three. Uh, mm -hmm. other people collaborating on the same uh, document. So that would be nice if you were working like 
like group work mm -hmm. and having students create something. And making sure that everybody's responsible. So one of the things is you can write small notes, but they can be different colors. So you can assign a color to each person. I'll be purple. Kay. I think that's purple. Yeah, looks like purple to me. <laughs> so you start the graphic organizer. So show us what it looks like on yours. Okay, this is a little sticky note. So and it then, shows up there. Yeah. yes, it'll show up on mine, and I do not see what you have on your screen until. I have to drop it. So if you see those faces in the corner, if I drop the note in the corner, it shows up on the screen. So I can do my own work, organize it however I want, and then drop it over there. And then I can do the same. And it'll stay on my screen, but it will also be on whoever you're sharing with. So actually, at the end of this, if you have four students uh, collaborating or less, uh, each can have their own product. So they don't necessarily have to have a shared product. They can just share the notes. And share ideas, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how can you share it? Going away from the device? Um, sharing, you have more options. Open in recorder, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So you can obviously record, which is nice. Um, email. Google Drive. Which is always nice as an option, especially if you're a Google school and kids are already on Google Drive sharing all of these documents with you and with each other. It's just the simplest way to uh, have the documents travel. Mm -hmm. And Looks like what? you can make copies of it. And if you press more, it doesn't give you more. No. Nope. So <laughs> that's about it. So this one is iBrainstorm project. And what I love about this one is that ability to collaborate, but still create your own product, exchange notes, and, uh, and that is very different than others. We have some like Kidspiration where you don't share mm -hmm. uh, or you don't collaborate. You can share, but a final product. And uh, the other one that you, of course, can use are the whiteboards, but then you're all working on the same space. Mm -hmm. What's special about this one is you're collaborating, you're sharing information, but you're not working in the same exact space. And that's uh, fairly unique. Yes. So today we talked about a few options for graphic organizers. And we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.